This is the OKest Hunter Podcast. Never pass on shooter bucks, if that's just me in the freezer. It's your tag, you hunt how you want. This is OKest Hunter. Hey everybody, welcome to the OKS Hunter Podcast, coming at you from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin today. Interesting, busy, crazy week. Uh, Derek isn't in studio, get some car trouble. Craig isn't in studio, he's getting ready for a big old trip to go fish uh, the ocean in Florida. Um, lots going on this week. We're also gearing up to get ready for the uh, open season, Wisconsin Dells trade show. Coming up this weekend, uh, we'll be heading there Friday, well, Thursday night, and then we'll be ready to roll for the Friday kickoff. So I got to pack up this whole room, tear everything down. So I'm in a different spot of the studio. Feels a little bit different, so just more for me to mess up. Hopefully, uh, we're live on TikTok for the first time in a while. Hopefully, the folks on TikTok can actually hear me this week. That's been an issue from what I've heard. If you guys can't hear me, hop over to YouTube, check it out over there. Uh, but if you can't hear me, then you didn't know that I said that. So that might be totally pointless but don't worry it's not going to be just me tonight because that would be terrible for everybody i do have some guests i'll bring on in just a second here so some housekeeping items i'm wearing a new hat uh this is gonna be hitting our store very soon it's the flocked up hat uh for turkey season we have a can eat the beard hat that's coming out too but the patches are proving to be a little bit more complicated than we thought so we're going back and forth with the manufacturer on getting those refined the desire was to have them for the trade show coming up I don't think that's going to happen. So um, we'll bring these ones instead, the flocked up ones. We have two different colors. I can reach this thing without breaking anything. If you're watching the, the live stream here, you can see this one here. This is the uh, mossy oak. I think it's mossy, yeah, mossy oak bottom one. And I don't know what pattern this is. It just looks cool. So there's that. Uh, we're also bringing only six of the weathered oaks and OKS Hunter um, uh, pot calls that weathered oaks Matt put together for us. And they say can't eat the beard on them. There's only six of them, and they're numbered one through six. So they are really nice. They sound amazing. And I'm not even really into that stuff as much as some of you guys are. So I think you'll really appreciate it. But they're first come, first serve. So when they're gone, they're gone. Same thing with these hats. We got a small run of them. When they're gone, they're gone. Um, randomly, I got uh, uppercutted by my two-year-old, who is the size of a four-year-old, when he leapfrogged into the bottom of my chin with his skull. And I bit through my tongue. And I'm not whining. I'm just saying I'm having a hard time talking. So uh, I'm not going to show you the gory details of the meat hanging off the side of my tongue. But um, I just felt the need to say that because I have like a lisp. And it's because I'm avoiding this giant thing in my tongue from where I bit down it on Saturday. Where my, where my kid jacked into me uh, with his super big head. Um, anywho, so... Shout out to our partners, Rack Hub. We got the Rack Hub uh, RH1 hanging up behind me over here by Fred Bear. That's going to come with us to the show. So if you guys want to check it out if you're in Wisconsin, if you come to the show, I'll bring that to you guys and kind of hands on it and see what it's like. Um, and then obviously go to go to rackhub.com slash OKS Hunter. Use code OHB. Get some money saved on uh, anything you're going to buy over there. They have more than just the RH1. They got the RH2 that holds two antlers. Uh, lots to do with that. We had a full episode with those guys, and we just finished our contest. Um I forgot to, not that I forgot, but I didn't have time to touch base to get the winner selected here. So that'll probably have to wait till next week, which will feel a little better coming off the trade show stuff anyways. This week's a little bit chaotic. So we'll announce the winner from the OK a Shed contest we did with those guys in shed season. Uh, big shout out to Latitude, good pals of ours. Um, they're going to be at the trade show as well. So for those of you that want to try a saddle, get in it, um, kind of kick the tires a little bit and then lean back and see what it's like. Like great opportunity. Their inventory is limited so um whenever they get it obviously okay as hunter or code ohp will save you some money on anything you're buy over there and same thing with spartan forge be sure to go to spartanforge.ai um their new chat bot is is coming online and looking pretty fresh blue forest tracker is working really great um really cool feature actually blue forest tracker so if you geofence an area um you can invite your hunting party to kind of use or like be invited to that geofence area whether it's 20 acres, 40, 180, whatever it is, anything anybody drops in terms of pins inside of that geofence, 
everyone in the group will see. So if I start taking pictures and uh, dropping pins for um, maybe it's sheds, maybe it's rubs, maybe it's, you know, uh, rub line or buck beds or where I want to put a tree stand, anyone in my group can see that just as I can see there. So if you want to like divide and conquer a new piece of public or a piece of private that you hunt with a party or a lease, like pretty cool feature. And then you kind of know where everyone's at inside of that as well. So um, go check those guys out. If you can use the code, you can get the app for free. So you can go try it out that way. But if you're going to pull the trigger and buy, make sure you go to the website, enter in the code and save yourself uh, 20% off for your annual subscription. That's it for the ad call outs for now. Um, more to come with Bear Archery. They're, we're obviously working with them and a uh, great partnership, but we're going to um, wait for Greg's bow to show up here. And we're going to go to an archery shop and do some like super fine tuning, get everything dialed in, set up. And we'll we'll kind of make an episodic out of that, like basically a bunch of OKS hunters getting their bows tuned up uh, from from soup to nuts, from start to finish. Like these things are super bare bones. So we're going to outfit it all the way to, you know, what's going to make me most comfortable at full draw. And Greg's going to be there every step of the way because he's the guy that can help me do all that stuff comfortably and confidently. So without. Uh, I don't I hate saying without further ado, so I'm gonna not say that. But uh, we're let's bring our guests on the the fellows from OKS Cook, our our newest podcast to hit the OKS podcast network or family of podcasts. What's up, fellas? Hello, hello. Um, happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for jumping on. I get really tired of the sound of my own voice, so I'm really happy you guys are here <laughs> to help fill that in a little yes. bit. Um, how's uh how's everyone's day going? It's good. It's good. Yeah. End of the day. Yeah. Got family. We're mostly self-employed over here. So uh, yeah, it's the start of the, the, uh, the passion project work day <laughs> now that all the real work is done. That's where I'm at. Yep. I, I clock out and I clock in and I'll be down here till, I don't know, 10 o'clock midnight. I got to go put the kids to bed, but after that, yeah. it's right yeah, back I, at it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spent some of my dad points, my dad PTO points to, to be on this call. It's, it's bedtime right now for the little kids and uh, it's worth it. Nothing like last minute notice, by the way, because I think I asked you guys yesterday <laughs> um, and I thought we were here for you. Yeah, no, it was like, well, I kind of had done this with some of the others. Like when they kind of came on, it's like, let's bring them on to the OKS OK Hunter podcast and talk about it and and share with the the community and the listeners like who you guys are, what you're up to, what this is all about. And Kind of what's going on you guys have your own debut episode that just launched last week the intro episode yeah. where you kind of did some of that but if you want to just go around the table here and uh introduce yourselves real quick i know uh, andy you're limited on time so if you want to go first just to make sure we get you covered right on yeah no i appreciate it i uh, appreciate you guys uh having us on the podcast today we're uh we're really excited about the okay is cook um when Chris and this Chris is kind of Chris's brainchild. I know that you guys initially connected and we're talking about that. And when, when he brought it to me, I was like, I think this is a great opportunity for us to, to kind of bridge the gap between um, hunters and, and getting a little bit better at cooking, that sort of thing. And um, all of us uh, started out nerding out on our uh, group chat about uh, the different recipes and things we're doing. We're trying that sort of thing. But uh um, by trade again, as, as Chris, uh, kind of alluded to, or kind of, you know, you guys talked about, about punching out of the workday clock. I am in marketing as a fractional CMO. Um, and so I've been, I've known Chris a long time. We actually met, uh, through a local networking chapter, um, a million years ago, and, uh, he has helped me with countless projects. And, uh, so we've just stayed connected. And then when I got into hunting a couple of years back, uh, he was kind of my go-to and that spiraled out into this kind of friends group here. Um, and, uh, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun the last couple of years. So, um, a little bit about me, I'll let you guys kind of take it from there. Yeah. Corey, get it. I think Can't Corey, you you're, I wonder if your mic. How about on. now? There you go. Good. All right. My bad. You're there. Chris and I actually met, uh, also uh, a while ago, our, our wives, uh, were in college together and, uh, uh we met through another, uh, a makers, uh, uh, makeup thing that we were doing together. And, uh, you know, I've been hunting since I was, you know, 15 years old and, and back and forth. What I love about this group is we're all experienced at different levels and different time commitments that we have into it. Um, and again, I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, by default. I do have a, uh, I've decided in the, after the last 10 years of paying my own bills, I've, I've allowed somebody else this year to, to pay, pay my bills this year as a full-time thing, but, uh, I still have two other companies that I own and, and operating. So when I'm done on the clock, I clock back in for, for my other stuff. So. 
Yeah, I don't know why we do this to ourselves, guys, but uh, Chris, you're up. (laughs) Yeah, Chris Wansettler. I am a commercial photographer here in central Indiana. I do a lot of marketing, advertising work. Um, Yeah, just uh, love food. You know, I love photographing food. I love eating food. And met Eric at ATA, what, like two years ago? Two shows ago or something Two or three. Yeah, it was the same year. I think I interviewed Waddell. So I was on Yeah, so I've been... Yeah, so I, I've just been dying to to photograph a cookbook, and for whatever reason, it just hasn't happened yet. So knock on wood, yeah, that's going to come soon. But I approached Eric and the the Okay is Hunter guys. I was like, hey, you know, I think your community would be a really cool community to connect with and make this cookbook. And then Eric was like, well, that's an awesome idea, but what if you did a podcast? And at the time, <laughs> I was like, man, I take pictures for a living. Like, I can't talk good. And, <laughs> The more I, I sat and stewed on it and like bonked heads with uh, these other two guys and Colton, who who can't be here today, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's starting a, a brand new accounting business and meeting one of his early clients tonight. So he, he can't skip that um, to, to join us, unfortunately. But yeah, I started talking with those three guys and they, they talked me into it. And here we are. Yeah, we got our first episode under our belt and a couple more, you know, in the barrel ready to go. Yeah, so like... Let's talk about that. So you and I met at ATA. I do remember that because I think you stopped me in like one of the aisles and you're like, hey, you're the OK Sunder guy. And I, that was like one of the it wasn't awkward at all. That happened to me. And I was like, man, is this like what's going to is this a thing now? And that was back when I was you're, doing more you're like famous, content. Eric. I don't know if you know this yet, but you're, you're, kind, of, you're kind of a big deal now. Uh, I try to stay. Uh, <laughs> I don't don't feed my ego. I have to work on a hard enough. This is um, no, but yeah, the cookbook thing I think would be really cool if you if you could if you get an opportunity to do that. And um, we got plans. We got plans. I want to do our own. I mean, that's I mean, ultimately, like selfishly here, I, w- I can't wait for us to have enough. No, don't episodes call, don't complete all the secrets, episodes. Andy. Come on, now. we're, we're going <laughs> to do something. I think you guys could. You know, it's funny. I actually want to do a book too, but nothing about cooking. I and it's not even a, a book I would publish. It's like we had uh, this uh, these OKS moments that you can submit on our website. If you go to OKSHunter.com, mm-hmm. you can submit a story. We call them OKS moments. And so, do we have like I don't know, probably. 100 200 of them somewhere in that range uh and some of them are like hysterical like laugh out loud funny i sip my coffee at one morning no joke reading it and my wife's like what the hell's going on i was like the story is out of control funny like i couldn't <laughs> handle it um some are emotional like i thought it'd be really cool if we had enough submissions every calendar year to make a coffee book table of okayest moments but then i was like oh god like how do you like I was like, I could just make this in like Canva or Shutterstock <laughs> or something basic because I wasn't trying to do anything super fancy. But I was like, oh, well, that's for like one book. I need to make I would like to make like 50 or 100 or at least anyone that submitted, they should get a copy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just became something that's that cool. I figured out that I knew nothing about how to get a book made. And uh, I just stopped pursuing that because everything else got busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. if you guys can pave the way. And right. and teach me your ways, then then I'll kind of just walk in the nice padded down trail like the okay as hunter that I am, um, and take yeah, we, we got some ideas. Take the easy route, <laughs> but I know yes. you you guys aren't just talking wild game on your podcast. So can you kind of just wade into kind of the ethos of okay as cook and like kind of I mean it's a bit self explanatory, but you guys put a nice kind of uh, tone to it when you describe it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like Andy said, we're we're trying to to bridge the gap between kind of the the hunters and the non hunters. You know, we don't want to be. We're all hunters, all four of us, all the all the the talkers, the hosts on the show, and um, but we don't want to make it like a hunting specific podcast. You know, like I said, we we've got a lot of family, a lot of friends who are not hunters, and honestly, are a little. They're still a little shy on eating wild game. So like we want to make conversations that that they would appreciate hearing that would inspire them to get in the, cook, the kitchen and, you know, kind of like, you know, it's, it's your tag, it's your hunt, like it's your kitchen, you know, eat what you want. Good. We're not going to judge you for using beef or using turkey instead of venison or wild turkey. You know, we're just here to make people happy and hungry and, you know, get excited about cooking. Um, I don't want to drone on too long about that. Um, and I will say, Episode one is all about who we are and what we do. Uh, so go tune in there, but I'm, I'm not going to be that guy. So um, we'll answer whatever you have to have to say. But um, I will say kind of a, the whole podcast revolves around four main pillars. And those pillars are commensality, 
the hunter gatherer mindset, education and fitness. And in our mind, kind of those four topics just like bleed into everything we do and kind of like form this really nice melting pot of just, you know, it, it brings it all together really well. Yeah. No, the common sensality, that's not a term I think I've heard. I don't know if you guys made that up or if I'm just, no, we, we make fun of we make fun of Chris for this one because this is the one like it, it actually of all the four is the like key pillar of what we're talking about, but it's the hardest word to say. So I refrain from saying it as much as possible. Yeah, we, we make Chris um, talk about that one. <laughs> we, every time it comes up, like Chris, what is the main pillar? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I thought um, I was reading as common sensality. That's is yeah, that, it's hard to yeah, so, you're yeah. not wrong. But, but <laughs> that mean like I'm I'm probably not saying it right, but I'm saying what it means right that's kind of yeah it, i mean so so back up uh basically i i had this thought and i was like hey i need a word that means this and so i kind of did the reverse google search i went to miriam's and all the dictionaries and i said hey tell me a word that means just eating together like sitting down and eating together and commensality is what popped up and it literally means like to sit down and share a meal and Part of, you know, in my mind, what makes, you know, the OKS cook like super, super cool is like the idea of commensality is not just physically sitting down, like, like with my wife and my kids tonight. Yeah, we sat down, we ate dinner. That's not the same. But like, yeah, but right now, like, hey, like we, you know, are practicing commensality, like through space, you know, eating, we're like verbally eating together here. Yeah, well, I mean, Um, that counts. But in, Yeah. yeah, 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 that counts. But uh, like literally as you use recipes, whether that's a cookbook or somebody's blog post or an heirloom recipe you've got from your, your distant past, like through space and time, like that, re- that recipe was written, you know, specifically for you to use and for you to eat. So in my mind, like every time I cook and use a recipe, like I'm connecting with the author of that recipe, like through space and time and I'm sitting down, you know, at the, at the metaphysical table, you know, eating with them. And sharing this meal with them and like in my mind that's that's commensality and that's what so that is different than what i was saying which i'm glad you took the time to define because much like um the shared experience is is interesting so ryan holiday talks about a shared experience with parenthood like at some point uh, even a caveman woman raising a kid had to carry a crying baby was getting puked on like had to protect them like that's a shared experience through time and history when you're a parent eating is a shared experience through time and history. Like we all have to eat. We all are parents. That's a different one, but like we all have to eat. We all do eat. I was just talking to someone at work today about this because they just went to Rome. And I was like, the first thing I asked was how is the food? And they're like, well, actually my expectations (laughs) were a little too high. I was expecting everything to be the best thing I've ever had in my life. And it was good, but not, it didn't hit that level. And I just think it's fascinating that when you go different places, we all as humans have the same tools to cook. We have fire and pots and pans and spatulas and all of those basic things, but like the outcomes and the outputs are so vastly different based on local ingredients and just cultural things and seasonings that are like local or native to that area. I think it's so fun to explore in the kitchen. And um, my wife is also not a big fan of wild game story there. If we want to do some stories here. She, I was out ice fishing with some buddies one year, this is uh, 2017, and I came home and she tried to make venison stew, except instead of just taking the whole roast and putting it in the crock pot and letting it do its thing, or getting like a chop or something like that, or a steak and just cubing it up, she cubed up an entire roast, which looked like a murder scene in our kitchen and also smelled very gamey. So I was like, I wish you would have called me to tell me you were doing that. I get that you're trying to be nice and surprise me with a really warm, toasty meal after a day <laughs> on the ice. Like, how amazing. But I would have told you to not do it that way. <laughs> oh, and no. that experience is what scarred her. Like, she was fine up until that point, oh, And ever no. since, she hasn't been good with it. And I'm like, damn it. Damn it. You know, we were, we were getting somewhere because she was going to make it for me. Like she was on the path and then the path got derailed by her own. Well, and that's the, like, this is like a big part of what we're like, what we really want people to get from the podcast in general is that most of the time when we hear about people having a negative experience with wild game, it has more to do with the preparation Mm -hmm. and less to do with the actual meat 
uh, ingredient itself. Um, I mean, th- uh, these guys, I thought for sure when I met Chris, you know, he, um, he, he was, he's a, he's real into waterfowl. Um, and you know, he told me he ate goose and I, all I knew about the time at that point in time was that everyone I know that's ever had goose just says it's terrible. And it's like, you can't eat it at all. Like it's like not worth eating. And, and then the very like first thing that Chris ever served me at our first wild game night was this goose pastrami that will like melt your brain. It's so good. <laughs> um, and yep. it's like, it's it lovely. all goes down to like, you just <laughs> properly understanding how to prepare that, that ingredient. And that's one of the things that we're really excited to share with people. Um, and even everything down to just ground beef, you know, like, you know, browning meats, like there's just so much to learn with a little bit of education. That's why education is one of our pillars as well. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Jay Rip just commented, Goose Prostami is epic. We had a gal on the show yeah. uh, a year or so ago, so one of our freelance writers, and she she talked about how goose is her favorite thing to cook and how everyone actually she had a bit of a clip or one of her clips went like a bit viral around that same topic because she's saying how it's one of the best things you can cook can taste the best. And everyone else is like, bullshit, goose sucks. <laughs> and she's like, no, you don't know how to cook it. Like you got to learn how to cook it. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm definitely an okay as cook because I will set the whole house up in smoke, trying to sear venison on a cast iron skillet in the kitchen. There's grease spattering everywhere. And there. like it doesn't go well. <laughs> and I'm, and the unfortunate part is I'm trying so hard to level up. So my wife can appreciate it. And then in the midst of that, it's all going to shit in her eyes. Like you've smoked the whole house. There's grease everywhere. Now I don't even want to try this. I'm like, <laughs> how do I do this right to get her to like it? Like, so what can you guys teach us? <laughs> like, what can you teach me? <laughs> Ooh, you know, on that front, I don't know if I've got much experience to pass on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is, is, you know, what I love about what we're doing is, you know, with the tiny little bit of exception, none of us have any experience in a, in a commercial kitchen. None of us are trained or anything Zero. like that. The only experience I have in a commercial kitchen is a summer camp. Um, so that's not even a real kitchen because uh, you're just throwing together whatever kids will eat. Um, but, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is getting, getting them involved, especially like with my kids is, is getting them involved. My, my daughter's old enough. She's hunting with me now. Like, you know, this is her first season actually, uh, getting out there and having her own hunt. Um, and so it's just getting them involved in, in every little bit of, of it. And, you know, my wife isn't the biggest hunter, uh, eater of, of wild game. Uh, all four of us, uh, struggle with that. Um, but I will say over the last few years, my wife has definitely opened up and it's just about preparing it and taking your time and slowing down and doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah, I think and if not doing it like slowing it down, doing it the right way, it's like you got to try it a few different ways sometimes. Yeah. Because hey, mm-hmm. if, it's like Andrew Zimmern said, you got to try something a few times, and like before you really decide you don't like it. So hey, if you cooked goose one way, you didn't like it, try it a different way. If you don't still don't like it, try it a different way. If you still don't like it, have someone else cook it for you. <laughs> if you still don't like it, like we'll give you a pass then. But you got to try it a few times. Right. That's pretty. That's a fair statement, and I think. If you're the one feeding, like if my wife keeps trying venison, but I'm the one that's cooking every time, that's also not fair. Like she's not getting a good experience. So like Greg and Derek and Tyler and everybody came over. Um, what? Not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. And we have this on video on our YouTube channel, like our last episode of our hunting season. We had like this commensality. Uh, everyone came together and the big conduit was like the venison that we got harvested over, had harvested over that season. And everyone brought different meals. Like Greg did this like love it he it's on the film like it's like he did this garlic onion cream cheese embedded venison steak that he cut really thin oh, and man. rolled it all up and then cooked it with that in the middle derek did some jalapeno thing on the grill like everyone did something um and it was really cool and it was good but my wife's like Ooh, why don't you kick it, cook it like this eric if you did that i'd eat it like, <laughs> well i'm trying to learn you know you don't give me a lot of opportunities to learn without me getting in trouble for starting the house on fire so it it is it is hard because you don't want to waste the food but you have to like you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet you have to it's true. sometimes like the venison i had a i had a deer i got um that was it wasn't a gut shot but it passed through the guts because it's such a, a quartering two high angled shot down to the ground that it eventually did it hit the gut and boy some of that meat did not taste good and that was mm. So, like this stuff, at least in the wild game side, it definitely starts in the field. Like, mm, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. It's taking good field carry, shot placement, all that stuff matters. The 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 gun buck I got last season, the great, great kill shot with one, you know, one shot down and done. Like there is nothing bad about that deer eating that one all day long. I don't have to worry about which piece of meat I'm grabbing based on where the shot was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, my wife, um, I, I, I dare say she she kind of stopped trusting me <laughs> in the kitchen. Um, you know, I, at one point I made some goose burgers and there's a guy, Jeremiah Doty. I, I think I'm saying his last name right. Yeah. From, from field to plate. Um, and he has this awesome Thai duck burger recipe. Oh, wow. I did it with goose and like turned out phenomenal. It was kind of spicy. Like the slaw was phenomenal. It was just awesome all around. And the mistake I made was I did not tell my wife it was made out of goose until after she had eaten one. Uh, and then she's like, <laughs> what, what did I just eat? <laughs> and now she's like demanding, like every time I cook something, like, what is it? What's in this? Like, what's really in this? <laughs> what yeah. animal is this? <laughs> right. Yeah, but isn't that fun? You like, know? I think there's something to be said. Like, this is a different, slightly different topic, but and I wanna, I'm okay with diverging a little bit. Man, I'm having a hard time talking with this stupid tongue thing. Um <laughs> And I have a hard time as it as it stands, but this concept—I don't—I I don't want to like beg on Disney, but honestly, this like cuteness of animals. I think I was impacted by that a lot as a kid. Like I was like, "Don't hurt animals! Yeah. Don't! Why would you kill that cute bunny? Why would you like? You don't eat! You don't eat that animal! That's a that's a majestic mm-hmm. creature! Why would you hunt and eat yeah. that?" And quite honestly like steve ranella with the mediator kind of opened my eyes to some of that stuff like no all this shit's edible and some of it's better mm. than others and now i'm yeah. more open to hearing that stuff and open to trying it but it had, there's a really big institutionalized stigma around wild game depending on some species are okay and permissible especially in wisconsin and the midwest like white-tailed deer people hunt them it's known um some bird turkey like but that's different because people are like what do you mean wild turkey wild turkey like where the f- do you think they come from? It's not just Thanksgiving at the grocery <laughs> store. Um, yeah. Yeah. This, this is food. like my, like, this is the one like soapbox that I tend to stand on quite a bit with all of my friends and family. Um, because I think one of the big problems we have in this country in general is we've lost our connection with where the food is coming from. Mm-hmm. And, and this is like a blessing and a curse. It's amazing that we live in a country where food is so readily available. Um, and that is, I mean, that's a really it's something that we like outside of america is a bigger issue than people have any idea of um and to be able to go to a grocery store and get food is awesome um however we've also slipped a little bit too far down that pendulum the other direction where people are losing the connectivity with the fact that the thing that they're eating is in fact an animal um and was yeah. an animal had a life and that sort of thing and if you do any research at all like what a cow goes through before it is butchered versus what that deer that you're talking about that you harvested uh in wisconsin like what the difference in the life that those two animals had um and who was actually healthier when you look at like what makes a healthy lifestyle in general i think that's the part of it that's really tough because one of the things that my wife says um is that um she's seen that deer's face so she doesn't want to eat it so that's uh, the part that I, I yeah, like, let's pull yeah. on that thread a little bit because yeah. I, it's like, I don't want to think about it. I, th- it's like this desire to not, to want to be removed from that part. Like, I don't want to see the cow get killed. I don't want to see the chickens get slaughtered. I don't want to see it with its head cut off. I don't want to see the deer meat dead. Like there's this, it, it, it actually, I mean, for me, like my, I have a buddy that will eat like he'll has he literally season over season has eaten beef jerky while we're gutting a deer he's like i'm hungry and he's eating i'm like dude i don't know what the hell's wrong with you but i can't get down with that like this is gross i don't i'm not going to eat while i'm doing this and so it does have have a little snack and doing all that it's so funny to me that he doesn't have a we don't have a beer and (laughs) uh, she's a beef jerky like yeah that's not but i mean here's the thing though eric i think that's one of the things that like you know, for me, um, and I think we're all at different levels of this and like what we're comfortable with. And we talk about this on the podcast yeah. coming up eventually, but we, uh, you know, like field dressing and an animal is not a fun, you know, task. That part is not fun. Um, but it, you know, but once that part's done for me, I mean, I always talk about this and I know I've, I mean, I've, I've skinned deer with, uh, with, in processed meat with, with Chris 
uh, and with Colton as well. And it's like, as soon as that hide comes off for me, it just looks like meat at that point. So I could yeah. probably eat beef jerky and continue doing that at that point for me personally. But I think that's the, that's the thing I think that uh, the takeaway is that um, as long as like, when you're like, again, a big, big thing that the Chris uh, touches on too, is like paying respects to the fact that like, when you're eating food, like that, that, that animal came from somewhere, like somebody made that for you. And again, I think I, for us, I think it comes from a, a level of like, like gratefulness that these animals exist, but to, 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 to like, to pretend like that thing didn't have a life prior to that and pretend like it wasn't a real living being. I feel like that to me feels a little bit more disrespectful than to, um, understand where it came from and that it, you know, and, and that it's there to nourish our bodies. And there's that trans, that transition of energy from them to us. It's just, is a very powerful thing that that's, you know, should be respected and viewed that way and to commoditize it into this chicken nugget that that's all I get out of a freezer bag is that's the part that's, it's a little sad, you know, in our eyes. Yeah. Well, when you think about it too, what it's happening, whether you want to believe it is or not. So whether that chicken that that beef that you buy from the store guess what it probably ended more inhumanely than it did than it would have if it would have been taken from a local farmer or from a 100%. from a hunter and so you know at the end of the day you know when it's an entire life up until yeah, the butchering process, and, and you, know. you know you know you don't know how you know when these when these big marketplaces you don't know how the, the animal is being raised or what its lifestyle is like uh, up until that point you know and, and what they're feeding them you know whereas you know with a, a lot with wild game or going to a local uh farmer to get your meat you know exactly what has been uh what that animal has been eating uh, or at least close to what the animal has been eating uh, and, and know how it's been handled in process. And I think that's just the part that some people, I get it. You, you can't process your food. I understand that. But whether you go buy it from the store, someone's processed that, that meat. Yeah. I think it's a good topic. There is a caller um, on the line here that wants to weigh in on it. Uh, Nathan, yeah. You're live on the show. Well, real, real quick. Oh. Sorry, real, real quick before yeah. I lose this thought. Uh, there, <laughs> there is a fine line between like we're impro, impro, impro from impro. I can't say it. The, the word like we're uh, <laughs> applying human traits to animals. Anthropomorphic. Yeah. I'm a photographer. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a fine line between like giving them too many human characteristics, but like also like respecting the animal for, for what it is. So like we need to we need to respect and treat these animals with care and love, like but like not buying from like big crazy stores and like you know I think hunting is is a better solution to that. But again, like they're not humans, so like we can't really like pull the Disney card and give them like all these super loving human attributes that they don't necessarily have out yeah. in the wild. No, that's a good. So I had to say that before I forgot. No, I'm glad you said it. It's, it's all, and I, we'll yeah. we'll continue to kind of uh, percolate on this one. But uh, Nathan, you're live on the show. Yeah. If you got a comment or question to throw in on this topic, we'd love to hear it. Yep. Yep. I cannot hear him. Oh, the fellas cannot hear you. Um, which has happened before. Let me, I don't know. Shoot. Well, I don't have a, I don't have a solution for that. I can hear him. You guys can't though, huh? I think he's on now. Can, can you guys hear him now? Nathan, Nathan sock. I thought I had him there for a second now. I think we're hearing a little bit of uh coming through coming through my mic yeah, maybe. yeah. well I, I mean obviously we want to hear what he has to say i mean if there's a question in there maybe you can repeat it i don't know i hate that I hate that we can't hear him I'm not coming through. Who, who wants to ramble here until Nathan comes through? <laughs> I can hear him a little bit. Yeah, no, it's super fascinating. And I'm sorry you guys can't hear him. I don't know. I guess I didn't check all my settings. Um, darn it. Hold on. I think I can fix it. Give me two seconds, Nathan. I'm so sorry. Um, no, it all says it's all coming through the roadcaster. Everything is lined up now, so I'm not sure where the issue might live. You guys still couldn't hear him, though? I was picking up yeah. just a little bit. Darn it. This only happened, like, 
a time or two, but usually I've uh well, there's guests. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to hear more from from Cadler. Cadler's uh eating canned venison. I just did that myself. Like, yeah, he, I, I need to I need to hear more about this. Nathan, go. Uh, thanks oh for calling, God. but I'm gonna drop you off since I'm the only one that can hear you. Yeah, no, that's no worries. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. Oh wait, I got him. Wait, 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 they can hear you. Stay. They can hear you. Hold on. Stay. 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 I fixed <laughs> it. Awesome. I clicked enough buttons that I got it to yes. work. So we'll go ahead and repeat uh your statement again. I'm so sorry, bud. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Like um basically I, I agree with you guys hundred percent. And my mom teaches in a big city, or she used to. And she would have kids that come into her classroom and they legitimately don't understand that chicken nuggets or the, the meat that they eat comes from an animal. Like they think it mm -hmm. comes from a package. It comes from a store. Like there's no connection whatsoever. And so, you know, even some of the kids in my neighborhood here, and we live in a pretty, I wouldn't say rural, but it's a small enough town that people kind of understand that. But even like, I'll get, I, I, when I harvested my deer last year, I had probably 10 kids just standing around in my garage as I butchered a deer, just yes. like, completely dumbfounded that that's where meat comes from it was it was pretty interesting oh, but yes. to their credit all the kids stood around and asked a lot of questions and so it's kind of a cool moment to that's that's awesome. Awesome. just be able to teach that some kids cool. like hey this this is where meat comes from it's what it looks like before you put it in a hamburger yeah that's awesome, awesome. That's do, do you do you happen to know like what their parents said like what did they go home and <laughs> say to their parents have you heard that side of the yeah, conversation? Yeah, I mean, most of their parents, I mean, they, they see me, I mean, I, I shoot my bow out in my front yard. So I think everybody kind of understands, like, nice. I'm, I'm that guy in the neighborhood. So, but, you know, I mean, all the parents, they don't have a problem with it. They think it's, they think it's cool. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. I, I, mean, I, I have I, not been I, old enough to try that in my front yard yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> Uh, I did have my uh, my son sit out with me. I have a 21 year old, and he has seen me butcher that down. Uh, you know, after I had the deer down at that point, but just seeing like how it all comes apart, and then because he's seen it come out of the packages the, that the year prior to that, you know, seeing like the like the packages that we packaged that like Chris and I and Colton did and and, and Corey did at the at Chris's house um from there to the table but you know when he got to see it actually come off the bone there was a lot more a lot more questions mm -hmm. there that makes it becomes a lot a lot more real but that's awesome that that experience exists there because uh, you know that's that's the, i think the the real like i'd love to i'm sure there's science and and polls out there that show this but um you know i i, I truly think that most kids these days probably have that idea especially you know younger um that you know that their their meal comes from packages in the grocery store that's where it comes from you know mm -hmm. um and that's well, uh, even, it's truly... even with my own kids like teaching them as we hunt and i take them out in the woods like helping them understand like when you take an animal you use the right equipment you do the practicing because we want to respect an animal as oh, much as possible yeah. and not have it suffer and not only does that honor the animal but also on like the table fare side of things if you can kill a deer ethically and it dies quickly the meat quality is going to be better. Yep. You know, you're going to get a better yeah. meal out of it than if it suffers and runs and you have to wait, you know, a day and a half to, mm -hmm. to get it. Like there's just, there's mm -hmm. quality issues there that we as hunters have the ability to control that maybe a feedlot animal, you can't control that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. for sure. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. No, good. Good. Thanks for calling in and helping me fix my audio. Yeah. Thank there. you. <laughs> oh yeah, you're from you. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Good night. Keep keep butchering in your garage. You know, keep keep, keep sharing your experience it. with keep the community. Sharing. Love it. It's cool. Zach Church, uh -huh. um, in the comments, he he actually sent me canned venison, uh, canned venison stew. Like it was in a jar, okay. like a see-through jar. So my wife's like, "What the <clears throat> are people sending you in the mail? Like, is this poisonous? <laughs> Do I got to worry about this?" <laughs> and I was like, uh, "No, yeah. no, he's a listener. He's he's commented in like." Um, Andy, you have a good night, buddy. Thanks for, for yeah, uh, uh, taking some time yeah. with us. Um, so, like, I can vouch for that being really tasty and easy and convenient. Like, I think it was actually a podcast yep. night. And podcast nights are super limited for me as far as, like, I don't get to really eat dinner on these nights. I come up and if there's any leftovers from what my wife does with the kids while well, they're out of the house, I'll, I'll grab it. But otherwise, it's like, I'll, honestly, I'm having like a bowl of cereal while I'm down here, like, putzing around getting everything done but that night i ate like a king and it was amazing um yes. but he also sent like canned jalapenos and much other stuff too it was really really nice one to do and it was Ooh, yeah it was cool to experience it honestly like to experience <clears throat> i wanted to try it and it was I, it wasn't that much different than you'd expect buying a, a can of beef soup i mean it tastes way better but the experience oh, yeah. was similar right like, people put 
yeah. soup in cans. Like, why wouldn't this be any different? You know? Right. Yeah. And it was hard for my wife to conceptually that's... get that. And I, I kind of had to use that yeah. analogy with her. And it, it kind of like, oh, well, that's a good point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a canned venison stew recipe that we'll probably talk about here on the podcast at some point. And yeah, it's a phenomenal way to keep like freezer space, like freezer yeah. management, like in check. You know, because you can store it in your pantry. You know, I've got three jars in there right now that have been in the pantry for a year and a half. And like, yeah, it's not as good maybe as like a fresh stew, but it's way better than anything Campbell's will give you, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Zach. Yeah, it'll, it'll be on the podcast. That's good. No, um, sorry, I'm just reading off the comments here. Zach just commented and said, uh, learning to control a pressure canner is a tricky thing. Uh, but he said he learned from a YouTube Clay Hayes wife, Liz Hayes, has a really good video on okay. how to teach that. Man, that's the biggest thing, man, is YouTube University is <laughs> is a gold mine. You know, like there's so many yeah. things. There are times where I'm still I will still pull up the Bearded Butcher Brothers video while I'm while I'm field dressing just because I get in the heat in the moment and I'm I'm amped up and I'm stoked and I'm forgetting steps. I'm just like, all right, I got to slow down. And I gotta, I gotta, I gotta watch this because I, I feel like I'm missing a step. So it's just all about yeah. taking the time, slowing down, and and getting a, being a part of the process. You know, we look at, we look at the way the world is right now, and it's fast, 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 fast. Everything is go, go, go. Whereas, uh, you know, people don't really take that time to have meals together anymore or prepare fine dining meals at home anymore uh, because it's no longer you know, there, this might push some buttons and, and I hope it doesn't. Um, and I hope people hear my, my heart of it. There's, it's no more, you know, a cup, both couple, both people in the, in the relationship have to be at work now. You know, there's no more, you know, the guy going out and, and, and working and then the wife preparing an amazing meal or the husband preparing an amazing meal and taking care of the home that that just doesn't exist hardly at all anymore and but you find that the people that do have that opportunity uh is you know they tend to eat better to be honest you know they tend to have better opportunities with uh local meats and whether they've hunted it or they've gone shopping at a local farmer's market or gotten their food from a local farmer Mm -hmm. No, you're not wrong. I hear the heart of it. And I think my wife has joked and she's like, man, I almost wish women's suffrage wasn't a thing. Like no longer our wives at home raising our kids and cooking meals. And not to say that like it was good before. That's not what I'm saying. Hear the heart of what I'm saying. I think that's a yeah. good way to deliver a message. But there's something to be said about the fact that we're never home. Like we're paying other people to watch our kids, to, to raise them to some degree. Like when the small time we do get with them, sure. it's interrupted. We're We're distracted. We're not having the home cooked meals like and, and that's a blanket statement. You know, obviously, a lot of folks are doing things just fine and, and well. And Danny, I think that's a lot of our listener base, to be quite frank. But it, this is one of those areas of life where I, I love the kitchen. I love cooking because I like I'll put I, we have an Alexa in our kitchen. I'll play, you know, some music. We'll get the kids on chairs because like a stool was cool. when We had one kid. but Now we have three and it just gets a lot of control. So they're standing on chairs. Like we're inviting them to help us mix things up and do what they can with what, you know, yeah. the tool. They even have their own, like, there's some pretty cool kid knives that exist now that won't cut them, but can cut veggies. Yeah. So like, Hey guys, you can cut up the peppers. Like you can do that with your kid knives and they're legit knives that'll cut the peppers that won't hurt them. And so there's good ways to get the kids involved in that kind of stuff. And like, yeah. being out by the grill, like dad, what are you doing here? Well, come stand out here with me. Let me show you how this looks. Don't touch it though. For the love of God, please don't touch the grill. But like, let's, <laughs> you know, um, why is it smoking? Well, that one's a smoker. Yeah. That's what, that's why it's smoking. Um, and so I don't know. I, I, I agree with you to, uh, to the extent of what you're talking about. Like it is a good way to slow down and remind us some of those family yeah. values that, you know, harken back to time when, Things weren't as chaotic. I mean, things have always been chaotic through human history. Like, there's not been a time like people used to crawl under tables for bomb shelters. Like, you know, something's always on fire in this world. It's just a little bit faster pace than it had been in the yeah. past. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, on this topic of kids, uh, we're currently doing some research on kid friendly meals. Yeah. So anyone who's listening, if you've got like good ideas, good tips. So I've got two really picky eaters. The third one just could care less what's in front of him. He just <laughs> shovels it down. Right. But um, yeah, we're we're working on some kid recipes or like just picky picky eater recipes. So if you guys have cool tips on, you know, meals that work for like the pickiest of eaters, like we'd love to hear that. Yeah. And we'll yeah. Like, love to include that in the in the podcast. I've heard a good one like uh chicken nuggets, but with turkey, like wild turkey, you can make turkey nuggets. And I've yeah. heard that's yeah. a, a pretty good recipe. 
to try out like if you can fry stuff it adds a... i want to try stuff like that but just like even making hot dogs like emulsifying meat in my mind is just uh, i just don't like the idea of that <laughs> but we'll see we'll, we'll get there we'll get there there's always i mean there's just so many things that you can do with kids i think i you know i'm fortunate that my oldest daughter loves to get out there with me and she loves to hunt. And, uh, I, it was such an awesome experience last year. Uh, I took my first buck with her in the blind with me, which was just awesome and amazing experience. She tracked it. Like she'd been tracking for 20 years, uh, because she was so, awesome. she's so low to the ground. She could see the, the, the trail a little bit better, <laughs> but what, you know, the guys tend to make fun of me a little bit, uh, because you know, with, with them, my key secret sauce is brown sugar, especially when it comes to wild game is throwing some brown sugar in that thing, man. And it, it changes the profile. And uh, it, I can tend to get them to eat it a little bit better, but yeah, man, I think that's going to be a really fun, uh, really fun episode uh, finding stuff. And I think it's going to be a good bridge episode uh, because that's where I think a lot of the disconnection with your own, you know, going out and getting your own meat or buying from a local uh, a farmer is, is, is the picky eaters. So if we can find that common ground and we can find those recipes that are a good bridge, then, then it's a, it's, it's a good connection. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah, I'll, see, I'm not the only one that does brown sugar. I, I was just supposed <laughs> to that. And uh, Calder, Calder, you're on the, on the show. You're live. If you had some comments, I know you're talking about the canned, the canned venison. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good, right. good. Appreciate the call. Good. Tell, tell us what you got. You can hear me okay? <laughs> yes. We can, yeah. Good, okay. Yeah, so I'm just, uh, yeah, like I said, I was just making some dinner here tonight. I have a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and uh, my wife's a little under the weather tonight, so I was in charge of dinner. And Johnny Cake came out good, and then canned venison came out great this year this is the first time i've done it but nice. um you know like you said jumped on youtube and kind of taught myself and i've used it a couple times here now so it's worked out great um just uh yeah the kid friendly thing i think just cooking with your kids is a great way you know to bond with them like you said a lot of people don't have a lot of time at home but once you do get home at the end of the day if you can figure out a way to enjoy that time around the dinner table um yeah it's something that you know now as a kid that's grown up i look back and cherish that so yeah i think oh, yeah. that's just a great thing to encourage people to do just you know get out in the kitchen with their kids no matter how how much time it takes and you know just include them and they'll remember it for you know the rest of their lives for sure absolutely yeah my favorite thing about having the kids at you know the dinner table um, I mean, we're not doing it tonight because it's podcast Tuesday, like it's a whole thing in our household, but we do prayers and, and every kid gets to take their turn to do prayers. And the things that they cool. talk about and say with their young minds, it's so impressive to hear how they view the world <laughs> and what they've gone through from their day and how they express that through prayer. It's really, uh, it's gotta be my favorite thing. And so like, regardless of what the hell it is we're eating, we try to get the kids to eat what we eat first. And then I'm just, I grew up as a, the way I grew up, it was like, eat all your food, every last bite on your plate, even if it's going to gag you or you're not getting out of the dinner table. You're not allowed to talk. Like, you know, I got to the point mm -hmm. where I was, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I'd like hawk food in my mouth and spit on the toilet. Um, like until I got <laughs> caught doing that, uh, that wasn't great, <laughs> but I don't want to fight those battles with my kids. Like kids, right. what I've learned about kids, not that my parenting <laughs> tactics are anything to talk about here, but it's like. Kids will eat when they're going to be hungry. Like, they'll eat. They'll either, they're either not hungry. They are like, no matter what, like yeah. the doctor told us at some point, like, look, your kids might have one good meal a day or even a week. And I'm like, I don't know how my daughter <laughs> stays alive. Like she doesn't eat. She eats like a bird, but every now and again, she'll have a really good meal. And man, is that, is that awesome when they have that one good meal? And it's like, oh, they're yeah, finally dude. sitting down and eating. Like I tell my wife, I'm like, can they just skip a meal? So I know they have a good dinner. Like, I don't, we just not give them lunch. I don't got to worry about it at dinner time. Yeah. You're not allowed to do that. We still got to try. Yeah. But <laughs> having a backup meal, like, well, like if they don't, if they don't like what yeah. we do, like, they'll just have whatever is the backup meal for them, which 
almost always ends up that way, but sometimes it doesn't. And those are wins in my book. Like, and they're getting older. Yeah. They're so damn young. It's like, I'm not going to fight with a two year old. What the hell he's going to eat? Who cares? Yeah. yeah. And it, it does. It definitely gets, it gets better as they get older. And, you know, and, and to the point of, you know, getting your kids involved, you know, my, my 10 year old, she can, she's got at least five recipes. I can go to her right now and she can just whip up off the top mm-hmm. of her head. You know, she'll wake nice. up on Saturday mornings and, and go down and make us eggs you know, without any help. I mean, she knows, you know, and that's just, that's just about being teaching them responsibility. You know, we're also, we're also foragers, you know, we're big, we love going mushroom hunting uh, and, and Addie has her first knife and she, you know, how how to be responsible with it. And uh, you know, and, but she learned through a bad experience, you know, she went to, to take the sheath off one of mine. she, She had her hand over it and I stopped her real quick and, but she got my hand and, and took, took a gap in my finger and, and, you know, I was like, listen, you know, yeah, you caused that I'm okay, but this is about being responsible and, and knowing how to use your tools and just getting them involved and, and whatever it is, you know, it's just spending that time. And also, you know, we're always talking about, Oh, there's only so much time you get by the time you get home at, you know, five o'clock or whatever. If you got little ones they are going to bed by seven 30, eight o'clock for school the next day, uh, you've got a very small window to spend with them. Well, if you're going to cook, spend that window with them and let them be involved. Yeah. And that's more time, more quality. And I think that's about a lot about what our podcast is, is about is just having that relationship with not just our, our food, but with those around us. You know, uh, my wife and yeah. I, uh, once every couple of months, we'll have a gather night and we call it the gather, um, where we'll post on Facebook. Anyone can come. I don't care who you are. I don't care if we haven't talked in five years. If you're a single mom, you got five kids, we'll have a Friday night. Just tell us how many you're bringing so we have enough Mm -hmm. food to make for everybody. And we just prepare a meal for everybody. And it's just a good way, A, to to create relationships, to love on people. Uh, That's something that I I love to do. And and to do that, an easy way to do that is feeding them. Um, But, you know, our last one we had, I think we had close to 47 people in our house. Holy shit. And and you're like, well, you wouldn't believe who's coming. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was such a cool opportunity. Cool. There were so many different people from different walks of life uh throughout my life that were all in one room together sharing a meal. Awesome. You know, yeah. and that's what I think that's what a lot about what this OKS cook is. You know, we don't have million dollar homes with hundred thousand dollar kitchens uh and all the latest and hottest gear. We got what we got. You know, we made a joke that we got the same knives that we got when we got married 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. They're <laughs> terrible. My scissors finally broke. <laughs> right. So it's just all about being being accepting that you're OK and willing but willing to be to get better. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah you, you got the ethos. Um, Calder, any oh, any yeah. other thoughts? We got you on the line here. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys are you guys are hitting, you know, everything. I'm agreeing and shaking my head, you know, nodding my head with everything awesome. you're saying. I find, you know, as my little girl grows up, she's now at the age where she's wanting to do stuff and follow me around to the chicken coop and to gathering sap and, yes. you know, whatever it is, just I encourage people just take your kids along with you, you know, no matter how much you might want to complete the task 10 or 15 minutes Oh, it's going to slow you down. It's going to yeah, be messier, but well worth it. Yeah, Bluey, Bluey did <laughs> a good episode yeah. of uh, the kids helping make an omelet. And I yeah. thought that was... <laughs> That was a good one. Great episode. Yeah. Believe me, it's such a good show. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. When I got, I got one of the. All right. Well, I'm. Th- yeah. Thanks, Call. I'll, I'll drop you off. Thanks for calling. Yeah, me, I'm gonna jump off. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good to hear from you, bud. Um, the the buck that's behind me over here, the the smaller one of the two, I got that one and dragged it out, put ice in the cavity of the chest because it was a, it was still warmer earlier season. I remember sweating on the way out to the stand for that one and. Got it home. Greg came over and he helped me cut out the loins. We threw them on the grill, fried them up. Um, mm. And my daughter ate venison that like that night, the same night I got yes. the buck. So I called her from the field. Hey, I got a buck. It was the first buck with my bow that I'd ever gotten. So super, nice. super exciting moment. I actually was like in pretty big disbelief. Like I was like, did it actually die? Like what's happening right yeah, now? That's super cool. And I called my wife and and my daughter <laughs> was like you got a deer she couldn't believe it she's like are we gonna eat it i'm like well sure we can we can eat it and so we we did and she she was young i think she was like three or something mm-hmm. like that and she ate it and then the deer i just got this last hunting season like she she's willing to try the steaks because she knows how much i love hunting 
She loves to be a part of it. We I've been doing this thing with her since she was little. I've talked about this on the show before called Cookies and Deer. So like mm. I'll make chocolate chip cookies with her. Uh, now I have to include my sons and I have to do eggless recipes for my one guy because he's allergic to eggs. But um, we'll do mm. cookies and deer. Well, we'll, it's my way of getting them to watch hunting YouTube videos with me. If I bribe them with cookies nice. and we all sit down with our cups <laughs> of milk, we can dip our cookies in the milk and watch. I'm like, this is it. We're watching daddy's hunting shows. Like we're going to watch the hunting public, yes. whatever we're watching um, behind the bow, all the, all the YouTube sensations that are out there. And <laughs> my kids will be like, they get excited for cookies and deer. So then when I get a deer, they get excited to eat the deer and like then they do nice. so you know we get outside and do a lot of stuff when we can too we usually just collect a lot of ticks but um you know those are other ways too and it's the dead of winter where it's too cold to go out, and i'm like trying to get them engaged in this stuff like that was kind of a neat mm -hmm. selfish yeah. selfish yeah. way to get them uh to watch hunting shows right. with me i'm still engaging with them and you know making it fun for them yeah. you know with the cookies <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not i'm not opposed to some bribery right <laughs> I just I mean I just I, the biggest thing for me I just love introducing people to something that's different you know people just being open minded because when you when you think yeah. about it and I was just thinking about it while we're sitting here when do you hear about hunters in the news when they you, mess up man so when they mess, mess up, up right oh, yeah, so when time. they mess up or you hear about trophy hunters I'm not a trophy hunter mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't care less for for trophy hunters you know I'm I'm that's my biggest bug right <laughs> I'm all about putting meat in the freezer, you know, at the end of the day and whether, no matter what that is that, that I'm hunting, if it's, if it's squirrels and I'm bagging enough so that I can make a stew, whatever, you know, it's just for me, like, I mean, you don't measure the tails, like what the hell are you talking right, about? Right. <laughs> but it's just all about, you know, you, you see, you only hear the bad things about the hunting world. Um, and, uh, and you know, this hunter was shot in the woods by, you know, on public land or, you know, this, this, trophy hunter in Africa killed one of the last big cats or whatever. And that's all you ever hear. You never hear about, you know, Indiana's DNR program where you, uh, you donate a, your donate your kill, uh, to needy families. And, you know, I'm sure every state has that. You, you don't see these types of programs where there are hunters out there, you know, in, uh, uh, what is it? What's our, our, uh, what's our Marion County stuff here, Chris reduction zone, um, where people are, 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 re you know, reducing an overpopulated area, but they're donating that meat to shelters. You don't hear about that yeah. stuff and you, and you won't. Or the story behind that African hunt, you know, watch some blood origin, you know, hunting literally is conservation. Right. And, you know, again, donating all that meat and, you know, saving villages from a crazy lion. So yeah. yeah. Well, there's, or you hear a lot of story that you don't hear when it's a gun opener and it's like there, the news station goes to the local fleet farm and talks about how these, you know, burly guys are going to buy gear. I had a woman stop me two archery seasons ago when I was putting my canoe in a river to get to a spot. And she's like, you can't, you can't hunt here. I'm like, well, I know I can't hunt here. That's mm -hmm. I'm going in the river. I'm going to go to the, the spot that I can hunt. And she's like, well, are you going to, what are you going to do? I'm like, she's like, are you sure it's huntable? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, I follow the law. Like I can show you the map and show you the areas. Yep. It's totally legal. You can look at the city ordinance. that just told us that that's now accessible for hunting. And, She's like, well, you're just gonna maim the animal. You're gonna drink. Are you bringing beers to drink in your in your stand? I was like, what? I was like, lady, what have you heard? Like, let's talk about this oh, for man. a minute. So I talked to her for probably 15 minutes, and by the end of the conversation, I had a new subscriber to our stuff, and she's that like, awesome. I really appreciate talking with you. Like, I didn't know. I thought all hunters were these like beer drinking, shooting their six shooters into the sky. You know kind of guys and yeah. i was like well no i mean my goal is to not i don't want to maim an animal i'm not drinking beer in the stand like it, uh, and so the non it's, it's, it's taking the time to have that it took a minute right. man it's taking time to she put me like, on my heels either. too like another and i mean someone else might have been like you lady like they might not have taken the time to like work through that but it did i was like yeah. Yeah. it was a confrontation and it, in, when you're in a confrontation like you're you can get a small adrenaline spike and that can induce some emotion. Oh, yeah. And then suddenly now, like you're not putting your best foot forward. Yeah. So it took me a second to like process what was happening. And, but, but her perception yeah. of the hunter was like, wow, how many other people think about us that way? And it's like, you're talking about Corey with the, oh, with man. the news, like it's promoting all yeah. the bad shit, which is why we have to be such good stewards. And this is a slightly different topic, but on the, yeah. it goes back to like the anaphomaporization. I can't say the word either, Chris. Um, 
Anthro Anthro Anthropomorphize yeah. these animals. I think <laughs> like if there's too much of that going on, it's I don't want to see this critter suffer. And well, I don't want to see it suffer either. Yeah. Like that's exactly. a bad outcome. I don't want to track it forever. I don't want to have bad tasting meat. Like I I want it to die quick quickly and ethically too. And um albeit yeah. I'm the okayest hunter. Like I do with Greg's help put a lot of effort into my setup um to make sure that I'm I'm good. And I do three d archery shoots to make sure I'm confident, like and that I'm shooting comfortably nice. and i try to shoot my broadheads and my my black hole target and i i do all these things um in the in-between times that i get to make sure that when the moment comes like i'm going to feel pretty good about what's going on here um yeah it's just i mean and it's just all about you know the 95 percent of us or 99 percent of us that do it the right way you know it's just like anything else you the one percent is the one that gets seen yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you, I'll report a freaking poacher in a heartbeat just because yeah, I don't... it can make us look bad. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and that's yeah. something, you know, Chris and I, you know, we've got some DNR guys, uh, uh, you know, here in Indiana that, that we've chat with. And I swear the moment, you know, during waterfowl season, as soon as we take our first shot, he's, he's within 20 yards of us within 30 seconds. Um, but you know what, we, we always have good interactions with them. You know, and and oh, yeah. and and then out, You're good guys. Yeah, and and out in the in the public, you know, with, with people that may not understand our lifestyle and may not understand why we do what we do. If you're willing to have a conversation, I'm willing to explain to you why I have this connection and why yeah. I do what I do. Yeah, no, it's yeah. all good. Um, well, tell folks where they can find you guys, what to expect on deck, uh, how to get involved. Yeah. I know you guys are doing some cool things with heirloom recipes and so forth and getting kids involved. So I'm sure there's more. Yeah. On deck. Yeah. 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 Um, like Eric said, we're definitely looking for heirloom recipes. You know, we're doing some research on that. So if you got cool heirloom things, you know, generations past, we'd love to share all that, you know, cooking for kids. We'd love to share all that. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. If you search okayest cook on, I want to say any platform we're, we'll be there, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you know, we, we kind of have to get that up and running. Uh, maybe we'll see what the government does, <laughs> like Eric said earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah search OKS Cook. I think we'll be there. Um, yeah, just shoot us a note. Shoot us an email. Um, also, OKSCook.com. Um, take a peek at our website. You know, um, email us, hello at OKSCook.com. You know, we'd love to chit-chat. Like I said, we'd love to, to talk all the food. We're not great at it, but we love it. And, you know, we're here to, to you know, spread the joy. No, thanks for sharing all that. And um, yeah, we'll be promoting you guys a little bit more sooner when we get everything kind of buttoned up. But your soft launch has kind of happened. I wouldn't say this is official. Yeah, official. We're about here. You're like, you guys are doing the thing. You got the stuff. Like, you're rocking and rolling. So, um, you know, anyone that listens to this podcast, now that you guys are part of the network, uh, whether you're on Spotify or, or Apple Podcasts, you should be able to see other shows by this network. Um, on Apple Podcasts, you'll be able to scroll through the different podcasts. These guys will show up, the OKS Cook. And then on Spotify, from your phone, you can click on the OKS Podcast Network icon below a show, and you can see the other shows on the network. So we're growing. Yeah. Things are happening. i um, glad you guys reached out to, to join the ranks or the family. And Dude, I think you guys are, to be a part of it, are yeah. an OK edition. So <laughs> yeah, happy to love it. You. Love it. Yes. Thrilled to be here. And thanks to everyone that commented on the live broadcast and called in. It's always good to have a two-way dialogue. We don't want to just talk yeah. at everybody all the time. So it's nice to invite you guys and gals into the conversation and and kind of chit-chat a little bit. And uh, again, quick reminder, we'll be at the, the me and uh, Tyler and uh, Matt and the Updeck guys will be at the Open Season Sportsman's Expo in the Wisconsin Dells uh, at the trade show up there at the Kalahari this Friday through sunday booth 1201 i finally remembered what the booth number was um we're in the big room in one of the back corners so you can find us there and come by say hi hang out pet the dogs chug a beer i don't know something have fun with us but uh yeah we'll end the show now but i think you guys your show is going to be airing on wednesdays weekly is that what we that's the goal all right yeah. wednesdays weekly yeah it's hard to keep track everyone's got different cadences so i'm like oh man i'm gonna mess this up yeah have some grace with me as I try to adjust my workflow <laughs> and workload, but we're, we're getting <laughs> all there. Good, all good. Building the plane as we fly. So everyone, thanks for, for tuning in and have a good night.